it increases serotonin in the brain and it reduces the production of norepinephrine and epinephrine during a stressful event. Heat stress is a chronic stressful event. Um, and so by doing so, we actually see a lower, um, so there, it goes through the HPA axis, um, and we actually see less norepinephrine and epinephrine systemically, but we also see less cortisol. And so that is the key. So during those stressful events, having less cortisol, we then have less downstream impacts. So on our fertility, um, on inflammation, on all of these different areas, because cortisol does impact every biological system. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Ashley Wagner, the Director of U.S. Business and Technical Sales at ProBiotech International. So Ashley, before we get started today, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Absolutely. So um, I'm a comparative animal nutritionist. I am with, as you mentioned, ProBiotech International. I've, I've been with the company uh, since 2015. Um, prior to that, I was, uh, I did research and development at a, a organization called Cooperative Research Farms. Um, my, uh, work has been again, all kind of across the board on monogastrics. Um, and since being at ProBiotech, I have really been focusing on how impacts of, of monoterpenes affect stress. Gotcha. So yeah, with that concept of stress, cause the stress can have a lot of negative impacts within pigs. And it's something that we as an industry are always very aware of and trying to reduce whenever possible. So to start, how would you define stress within swine production? So, you know, there's a, lots of definitions of stress out there, as, as you kind of alluded to. And most people think about stress within themselves, but, you know, we're really thinking about the, the, the animal, whether it's a person, a pig, or even, a, even a chicken. Um, and what, Stress can be defined as, and I, I love this definition, is it's any external or internal factors that's going to negatively impact the physiological and psychological um, processes within an animal. Yeah. So based on that definition, there's a lot of areas of stress within swine production. So which would you say is the, the highest or most important area of stress in swine production? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so, you know, of course, every every pig is going to go through weaning stress. And I am not trying to say that that is not a stressful period because it absolutely is. But from an economic perspective, heat stress might be the biggest problem in the swine industry. Jay Johnson wrote in a, a, a manuscript actually that they were, were estimating $520 million lost in 2024 due to heat stress in the swine industry. I mean, that's, that's a pretty large amount of money <laughs> um, when we think about it. So that I would think is, is probably the highest area of stress due to the economic impact. Gotcha. Yeah. Like you said, weaning stress, and I've done a lot of podcasts and looked at a lot of research when it comes to weaning stress, and it is a very important factor. But yeah, like you said, it's, we can't keep the pigs in the south forever. It's inevitable that they're going to have to be stressed. And yeah, we can try to reduce it. But yes, like you said, heat stress, I feel like has the most availability for us to be able to step in and actually do something about it. So um, I guess with the heat stress, like mechanistically within the sow as well, what, what is happening there? What does that heat stress actually cause and how is that money lost? Yeah. So that's, a, that's another great question. Um, you know, if you think about it, if in the moment of heat stress, so that's how we're going to see reductions in fertility. We're going to see longer wean to estrus intervals. We're going to see less um, feed being consumed. We may see an increase in weight loss during lactation, um, but it will also impact impact the piglet in utero. So if the heat stress is occurring during gestation, we actually have lifelong impacts on that fetus. So once that piglet is out, we see poor performance efficiency. We see altered um, metabolism. There's a, they're, they are more stress intolerant um, and more susceptible to heat stress. And then we also see, you know, poor nutrient partitioning in those animals. So not only is there the impact in the moment. So, you know, if we're dealing with heat stress, you know, during a lactation period, and then we don't have, you know, a good fertility in that sow, 
But if it's going on during gestation, we also have that impact that will last throughout the entire piglet's life. And that also is, you know, money lost. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face. And that is why we strive to bring research driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. Gotcha. So yeah, you mentioned some of that that happens, especially within the piglets and also with lactation because that feed intake during lactation is very important. But going back a little bit on that sow, looking at early gestation and breeding time, that weaned to estrus period, um, can this really have like a big impact as well on the fertility of the animal and possibly abortions as well? Absolutely. So what we actually see is we see lower fertility and that's because, you know, when, if we take the feed intake piece away and we say that she's, let's say she's in great body condition. Um, but cortisol is going to be right higher during periods of heat stress. Cortisol actually will impact other fertility hormones. And so what we see is we see less fertility hormones being produced and therefore we have less fertile cells. Um, and that's all due to just the impact of cortisol during heat stress. And again, assuming she was in a good body condition because body condition is also going to impact the production of those fertility hormones. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a big part of it. But as far as in utero, I, I know I mentioned the, the pig's life afterwards, but we actually see a much higher instance of abortions during, with in utero heat stress. Um, we actually recently did a, a trial with, with Jay Johnson, who's at the university of Missouri now. Um, and we looked at, uh, actually causing heat stress during the first part of gestation. So for the first 60 days, and we saw that the cells that were just being heat stressed had a very high occurrence of abortions um, in this trial. We did utilize um, some of the monoterpenes that we have in a proprietary blend. The product is, is called CCC, and we actually fed that to, to the cells during that heat stress, and we and that was able to mitigate those abortions, um, which was very exciting results for us. Gotcha. So yeah, you mentioned that product and I was about to ask you as well, like from a nutrition standpoint, um, what kind of changes can we see within the sow as well? And what can we really do in terms of nutritionally providing them something that can help them be more resistant to the heat stress? Yeah, that, that's great. So, so, you know, we think of heat stress and a lot of people are using, you know, environmental tools. So like cooling pads or, um, you know, in changing their ventilation. But the thing is heat stress is actually occurring at, 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 at temperatures that I think most producers are unaware of. And so diet is not something that's often used, but with the product like CCC, which is a blend of monoterpenes. And so this product actually, as the animal consumes it, it increases serotonin in the brain and it reduces the production of norepinephrine and epinephrine during a stressful event. Heat stress is a chronic stressful event. Um, and so by doing so, we actually see a lower, um, so there, it goes through the HPA axis, um, and we actually see less norepinephrine and epinephrine systemically, but we also see less cortisol. And so that is the key. So during those stressful events, having less cortisol, we then have less downstream impacts. So on our fertility, um, on inflammation, on all of these different areas, because cortisol does impact every biological system. Um, you know, I, I, I have usually told a, a story. Um, my daughter actually has anxiety. And so she has uh, an irregular serotonin and norepinephrine. Um, you know, this is some of the things of anxiety and that's how the drugs that people take will alter those in the brain. And so the, the her therapist actually told her to take a, a pen and put it in her mouth and, and it causes you to smile. Um, and so when she did that, it actually is releasing serotonin if you hold it for more than 30 seconds. What's so exciting about that is it's, this is the product is working in that same type of way, but we can tailor it towards these stress events. Like we know when summer is coming. We know when we're going to have increased chances of heat stress. So if we can put a product like that into the feed, it, then we can, again, protect the sow and protect the pig lifelong. So actually 
in that trial, we did follow the piglets and we saw that they had less cortisol um, post weaning, which again, making them more tolerant to stressful events um, such as weaning or potential heat stress down the road. Um, we've also done other trials where we've looked at um, wean to estrus interval. We're able to shorten that. We see increased um, increased acceptance of that first service. And so not needing to reservice the sow. So improved fertility metrics across the board. Um, and then again, if it's used in lactation, we um, are actually seeing better piglet weaning weights, um, which is fantastic. Again, because we know that if that sow is consuming um, enough feed, we're going to be able to get a good milk quality and then provide that onto to the piglet. So, and again, heat stress can impact uh, feed intake. So, Gotcha. So final question I have for you is you mentioned this product called CCC. Where can someone find that exactly? Yeah. So um, CCC is available through Essential Ag Solutions um, and you can contact your Essential Ag rep um, to, to get a hold of the product. Well, thank you, Ashley, for coming on the show and being a guest today. I hope that everyone listening can find some value in this episode and trying to combat heat stress. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.